Hello and welcome to the lovely Callum Hello. Smart video. Hi, Hello. Um, so Callum is a massive TikToker, really, isn't he? What are you at? 350,000? 316. Mm, yeah. I forgot about 10,000. <laughs> Hopefully I can't have that. So I thought to myself, right, Callum Disney actually you don't really in fact you don't you don't do talking videos sometimes yeah no on not I've really. only seen a couple yeah. and they're not like they're not deep or anything they're not about you yeah yep. um, and I thought we are following like that people are want are going to want to know about you mm -hmm. absolutely so mm -hmm. that was why I reached out to you and said you want to come on <laughs> And he was buzzing to come on. He's yep. never done a podcast no. before, so that's really that's really brave of you. Thanks. Um, so I'm doing this completely blind because obviously, if you don't share anything online, I've got nothing to research. Yeah. Right. Other than I know your birthday's Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> so you baby Jesus. I know. <laughs> I know. That's about as much as I know. And that you're nearly. What did you say? Thirty two in Christmas Day. Yep. You on in Christmas Day? You'll be thirty two. Yep. Aye. So. I think that's it. Other than, like, I've seen you say stuff about, like... Shit self, myself on self, camera. <laughs> no, <laughs> And you nervous on camera. No, like but, that. like, I mean, like, on nights out and stuff, I'm always saying that I'm uh, nearly enough shit myself on nights out. Really? Yeah. Uh, so you're actually really nervous on camera? No, like, talking, yeah, yeah. Aye, but... Obviously, with your videos, so you you're an entertainer, mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. right? And you're signed up to an agency in that as yeah, well. Yeah, got so. the Gold Studios. That Aye. was last year. I got signed. Last Aye, year. so I'm going to ask you about all of that. So I do know as well. I was able to ascertain that your TikTok took off during lockdown. Mm -hmm. Like everybody, yep. that I seem to speak yep. to. How did it start? Two thousand and twenty. Well, yeah, 2018 was when I started. Right. I started doing like you know stupid little videos, and I was just showing people from my work, my friends, and it was always just like the lip sync ones. Aye, that's what. That's probably your main thing. Yeah, like, lip sync mm, and scaring my friend. Aye, Stephen. So yeah. Stephen McHale yeah. is is he your best friend? Best friend is your best friend as well. So anybody that doesn't know Stephen's a massive entertainer, mm -hmm. huge on TikTok. He's got an Instagram page as Instagram, well, which yep. I think is quite big. And he uh, had a show at the festival, and he's involved in another show that's going he's on. He's doing the exact right? same show. He's doing it today at Clapham Grand in London. Aye, and he's living in England now. He's living he? in Lin England. Um, yeah. Maybe one day when he's up, he'll come on and chat to us. Never know. Um, so anyway, that's that. Your your best friends with Stephen. Did that? Is that to all part of your story, like becoming big on TikTok, or so? Yeah. So as I said, I was doing the, um, the lip sync videos, showing them off to my friend, uh, my friends at work, and stuff like that. And then two thousand and nineteen, I met Stephen through Instagram started just oh, messaging Instagram? him yeah right, just okay just message him backwards and forwards and then we started becoming friends and then he's in five as well though, he, aren't he? yeah he aye, lived in five aye. and Stephen was just giving me so much advice and just telling me to post every day and lockdown happened and then i was just yeah here we are oh uh, that's it you just kept posting yep. every day yep. so then did the agency approach you or did you approach them? the agency appro approached me last november so it's nearly been a year since I've been signed. And have you been doing work? Um, some, yeah. Um, um, I've done. Uh, I did an ad for YouTube, um, for TikTok. Um, I've done a music campaign, and I've been invited to like um, events and stuff. I was at one last week in Edinburgh, um, for the cocktail festival. Mm -hmm. So I got invited to that, and I've been invited to like the Alchemist and stuff like that as well. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. So, and is it comedy that you're doing? Comedy, uh, lip syncs, yeah, just, and, yep. Mm -hmm. So, would you class yourself as a comedian? You're nervous. I know, I am. That. I it's am. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> you're among I, pals. Do you know what it is? I make, like, you know, I take the piss on myself all the time on, like, social media and stuff and see serious talking. It's just like... It's not your thing. No. I know. I know, but it's all right. You don't need to be serious as well. You can have a laugh as well. It's fine. I, I quite like a laugh. <laughs> Although I don't, we don't really... This has actually become such a serious thing that there isn't a lot of laughs on it. But, yeah, but I'm fine with that. I'd mm -hmm. like I'd like a wee laugh. It's fine. Because um, that's what keeps us... I mean, that's part of therapy, yeah. which I'm going to come on to. Because I do think you're quite a deep... 
guy, actually, that's what I'm thinking. So we're going to try and delve into that. I said to him, this is an episode of This Is Your Life. And then I said, I keep saying that and said to him, do you know what This Is Your Life is? But he does, because do. you're old enough to remember. Do. But if anybody doesn't know what This Is Your Life is, it was a programme back in the 80s and 90s. In fact, my hero George Michael was on it one time as well, where um, it's just like... Michael Aspel had this big red book and did a, a rundown of the person's life and told all the stories for their life and had people come onto the, the stage that were in this, the person's life and that's it really so that's what sometimes this turns into and that's what it is today because <laughs> we don't know anything about Calum. So do you do, is that your full time job now? No, I work selling cars. You do not. I do. You do not. Yeah. Oh, that's mental. <laughs> in um, Kirkcaldy? Yeah. So I used to work for, well, it was Capital Bank Motor mm -hmm. within Bank of Scotland before it became like Bank of Scotland Motor Finance or whatever it was called. Yeah. I don't know. So I know the, I know the motor trade quite well. Um, that's mental. So that's what you do. That's what would I do. You, would you like it to be? Definitely, yeah. Your full time um, job? Yeah. It's just a bit. Money is a bit big thing for me because I've got my own flat and stuff well, like that. You as need well, to so be able to live. It's I a like, big thing for everybody, yeah, Callum. We all yeah, need to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just hard to juggle the two because I've got a full time job. I work 11 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I get two days off. And then I've got TikTok as well and social media. So you're trying to do both? Juggle. Yeah. Yeah. But ultimately, you would love. Would so, is that yeah. your day off today? Day off today. Aye, right, that's yep. good. Thank you for coming that's to all right. chat with you on that's your day right. off. Um, so, going back to, I can't even, for somebody that's a car salesman, you can talk then. <laughs> right, so don't try and kid us on that you're not a talker. Um, cause, uh, um, so, going, let's talk about your life then. Okay. Right, so what's Callum's story? Where did you, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Well, Where's actually, the... I was born in Germany. No. Yeah, I was born in Germany. My dad was in the army. Um, I've got a stepdad and a biological dad. Biological dad so was in the fun. army. Do you? <laughs> um, and I got, we got brought over here um, after I was born. And I think we lived in Windsor for a couple of years and then went up to Scotland. Uh, lived in Resyth. Mm-hmm. And then moved up to a wee town called Collinsborough. Oh, I don't and I was, know that. Um, that? It's, do you know where Anstruther and all that? Ah, he's yeah. still five, So right? all that way, yeah. Aye. The east. Yeah, the east, yeah. Aye. And then moved a couple of places again. And moved to Glenrothes for most of my life, teenager, uh, teenage years growing up. And then I bought my own place in Kirkcaldy. And is your mum and dad here? Um, my mum is here, my stepdad's here, my dad lives in London. Do you see him? Eh, uh, sometimes, yeah. So you've got a relationship with them all? Um... All right. <laughs> I know that story as well. <laughs> um, so, do you... I've got a relationship with my mum, I love my mum to pieces, she's my big supporter, she's my best pal, um, but... I see as my dad as much as I can because my gran still lives up here. Mm -hmm. She lives in uh, Tullibury. Mm -hmm. But my stepdad, I'm kind of complicated. Right, right that's okay. We, that's fine. <laughs> um, so your mum's your person. I saw yep. that, actually. I did think that because I've seen you posting about your mum a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, it was our 60th a couple of months ago. Um, and we threw a surprise party with her. My auntie Yvonne was there. Oh, oh, I've not said that, actually. <laughs> no, God, I should have said that. Um, yeah, so mm. I got sent home early that night because... I got a wee bit too drunk. Oh, I'm sent not home for the party. Yeah, I'm not a family kind of. Well, I am a family person, but I'm. If I've not seen a lot of family or anything, I get quite awkward. So I used the alcohol to pluck up my courage. Mask it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I went home, threw up all of my carpet, and hoovered it up. Oh my god! Yep. When you were drunk. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. And I left it for a week, and it was like a huge mouldy flump oh. when I took the. Hoover apart. Oh my god. <laughs> so have you got social anxiety? Um, I don't think so. Maybe. I'm just very... I don't know. Um, probably. I think so. Aye. Yeah. Um, so Callum's auntie Yvonne, 
mm -hmm. I used to work with in the bank as well. Like, so I've known Yvonne for, oh God, I don't know, 20, maybe nearly 20 years. But I've actually known of her for even longer than that. Oh, because yeah. when I used to go into, so Yvonne started off with the Halifax. Mm -hmm. So when I used to go into the Halifax as a teenager to take my money out for my weekend job, Yvonne was managing the branch then. And I'm, what I'm, was she like as a manager? Oh, well, she's brilliant. I mean, I can't really say anything different, can I? I can't say anything horrible about her, but there is nothing hor horrible to say about Yvonne. She mm -hmm. is lovely. Mm -hmm. I'm lovely. She was, and then, like, she took me under her wing to actually, so I moved from corporate and business bank and, and a retail bank, and, yeah. um, and Yvonne actually was the person that was mentoring me. Because she lived in Livingston as well, so did I at the time. So it was all, like, it was just all. And I knew her family. Like, yeah. I know Cheryl. And obviously I know Mandy because she did my nails mm -hmm. and whatever. So Yvonne's a pal of mine. Mm -hmm. So you'll never... Nobody would say anything horrible about Yvonne because no, she's, she's lovely. Great. She's great. So I, she was, I mean, it was quite a close relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's mental. I didn't know that when I first connected with you. Yeah, I just remember just seen your following and you were following Manny Vaughn, Manny Mandy and Cheryl as well and I was just like wait a minute how do you know her? <laughs> and I just, I just remember messaging you going uh, wait a minute and uh, then yeah I so it just shows you it's a small world mm -hmm. eh? have you got any brothers or sisters? I've got two sisters oh have you? Yeah, are I've you the two. baby? no I'm the oldest are you? yeah so I've got my sister Leanne who's turning 30 this year and I've got my sister Charlotte who is 23 Right, yeah. so you're the, right. Are they, are they also dad and stepdad scenario? Me and Leanne have got the same dad. Right. Charlotte's got a um, stepdad. Similar in my family yeah. as well, but they're still your, your sisters. Yeah, same absolutely. Um, Charlotte's a little shit, but I love her a bit. <laughs> well, like, that comes with families, man. Just take my wean, for example, but we're not going down that road today. Um... So that's your family set up. You got on with them mm. and whatever, your sisters. So sounds like, sounds all nice and... Oh, yeah, we're all good. Yeah. Happy families uh, to a point. I realise that, you know, it's not exactly like that. Right, so I saw you saying on one of your posts... We're going to dig into the mental health now. Okay. Um, I saw you saying on one of your posts about being... Accepting who you are and not beating yourself up for who you're not, mm -hmm. and being grateful for who you are, or what you've achieved. I think it was about what, you achieve, what you've achieved, actually. I think it was maybe right that you said. Was that a while back? Aye. I yeah. mean, I've been right back to try and find anything out about you. I've been back to the start of your Instagram. I think that must have been when I turned 30. Aye, I think yeah, it was. because I was so worried about what I've not got. So, but then it was actually Stephen who said... Think about what you've achieved so far before turning 30 mm -hmm. instead of what you've not got. Like, you know, I've, I've been single for a long time, seven years, and I'm like, oh, I don't have a boyfriend and I'm turning 30. Um, but, you know, I bought my own flat. I've got a good social media following. I've got management. And that was all before I turned and 30. And you've got a job. And I've got a full-time mm, job. You've got, I mean, that's... So that was more mm -hmm. of what I thought of after I turned 30 rather than... Kicking my friends out at half past eleven on Christmas Eve and going, right, you just need to leave, I'm going to cry. Um, but yeah, no, that's my advice for anybody who turns 30 and says, what have I done? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm turning 50 and it's like, oh my God, you're only 30, man. But in saying that, I was the same as you. That's why I always say I don't even know how I got to 50 because... There was various points in my life mm -hmm. where when I was much younger... And it's it's a bit of a shame that you only think like this as you get older, but you start to really value life so so much more as you get older. Um, but like you, when I was younger, I was just constantly, well, I'm saying like you, I don't know if you were constantly beating yourself up. I was, that's what I used to do. So did you go through a, a phase of having to work on yourself? Yeah. Um, I was with someone for four years, um, and he was my first boyfriend, first love, and we split up in 2016, and that's when I kind of had to kick my arse 
a wee bit and just be like, right, what have I done? What have I not done? Um, and just try and concentrate on myself, saving money. Because I was always spending it when I was in a relationship like you normally do. Mm -hmm. um, and after I, I got dumped, um, oh. I just started, I just started saving my money and I ended up buying a flat for myself get my first mortgage and everything like that so I feel like now I'm the person that I've kind of I've grown as a person and I'm probably the happiest I've ever been as well and you're on your own on completely own. Yeah. single completely um, whatever single. so the whole relationship thing is that been is that been hard for you is that been your thing yeah um I obviously I love my own company and because I've been living by myself, I've become far too independent and antisocial, going back to social anxiety. I'm very much antisocial when it comes to going out places like parties or like nights out are different, but like family gatherings and everything like that. I'm just. You struggle in it. Yeah. In those uh, scenarios. That's so interesting because you always think that people who put themselves out there on social media. Mm -hmm. Are the com you think they're going to be the complete opposite, like party animals, and that's not you nope. at all. Well, I am a party animal, but I'm not a. I don't know. I just I don't know what it is. The social side, yeah. Does it bother you? A little bit, yeah. It does. Mm -hmm. Definitely does because, um, I'll see like, my sisters have got good relationship with the the like other family as well, whereas I don't have that relationship, and it's me, not them. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, I just need to work on that. But at the same time, don't beat yourself up about it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if it's your family you're talking about, your family are going to love you anyway. Yeah. Regardless. Mm -hmm. So, see, so I asked you um, to come on here, and you're nervous as anyway, <laughs> right? Uh, what, what made you push yourself to do this? I've never done it before. To get yourself to get chatting. yeah, I've never done this before, and obviously, talking in a serious sort of would probably maybe overcome, and might be able to do it more often. I don't know. I will help you. That's yeah. what we'll do here. We'll help you <laughs> speak more. I think, I personally think, right, what you do, what you create, is amazing. You know, don't that's comedy and it's funny and it's entertaining. But I personally think that people would love to see wee bits of your chat mm -hmm. um, on videos about how your just how your day's going or how you're feeling or whatever you know that reality side yep. of things. Is is that something that you want to do more of? Probably yeah, because um, obviously I want to get to know. I want my followers to see who I am, not just doing lip sync videos and stuff it's just timing as well like i'd love to just sit down and do like videos like this and stuff like that but i live in our days at work and it's just tiring sometimes oh i know bill you should you know that um oh, what's his name again just forgotten his name he's huge as well he's been on my podcast john what's his instagram name john that talks about the mental health you know who I mean? I've just forgotten what his Instagram and TikTok name is. My point is, he he doesn't now, but he's only just resigned for that job. He was a car salesman. Mm -hmm. That's so what he. Oh, I know do, what you're on about. Aye, I've just I forgotten know who you're on about. What's his I don't. I can't remember. Can, I do aye. follow him as well. Ah, and he's been on the podcast. Sorry, John, if you watch this, <laughs> I've forgotten your second name. Um, he what he would do is. At his lunchtime, he'd be sitting in his car, you know, recording his TikToks, mm -hmm. sitting in his car and things like yeah. that. But he openly says as well that it was really difficult to manage and get back to every day. But I think you can still do that, like record during the day in your car, whatever, whatever. But you don't need to put the pressure on yourself yep. to reply to people mm -hmm. or even put the pressure on yourself to do it. It's just an option you know if it's what you want to mm -hmm. do i think it would be massively like people there's this big thing now about people by people 
So the more you give of yourself personally, mm -hmm. the more people attract yeah. to that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, definitely what Well, in my experience, it definitely works. But then you just need to get comfortable talking about... What kind of things would you want to talk about? Do you know what? I do a lot of baking at home. Oh, do you? Yeah. And I've done a few videos doing baking. Like, all I do is cupcakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, again, it's just timing, just for work and stuff. So I need to get uh, back into just doing, like, wee cupcake videos and... Talk through them. Yeah. Talk about what I, you Like, do. I've done that before. It's just a lot of... A lot of work. It's a lot of just... I need to find the time to do it. I know. It is quite... Working, it is quite draining. So there is days where I'm just like, I come home from work, and I'm like, oh, I've got to post a video, and I just do a stupid, like, it's not stupid, but like a lip sync video, just just so I can get a video just so done. you get some just there. something to post. But then on my days off, I don't really think about a lot of social media. I just try and chill out most of the time as well. But I do need to get back in there. As um, I mean, it just depends what you really want out of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you do want to be an entertainer and get work from your social media it is so so i don't think people realize how hard it is creating content mm -hmm. it takes so much time but also it takes so much brain mm -hmm. energy emotional energy it's just yeah. so all consuming which is one of the reasons i don't do tiktok i mean apart from being shit scared of <laughs> um so you're not the only one that's got nerves you know in some departments um, it just like gives me the fear mm -hmm. how how absolutely you know n there's no limits to what people say or you know tell you yeah. in the comments on there and I'm just think oh god no I don't think I could cope with that um, so I I get it like I don't I just share wee clips of the podcast mm -hmm. on TikTok that's how I find you actually. I know, aye, that's right, yeah. and then connected on Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but I get that. But also, there's the whole self-care thing. Like, do you feel, like, mental health-wise, do you struggle? Um, I struggle more being <laughs> lonely. Because, um, obviously, I live by myself. I live alone. Uh the more I'm struggling with trying to meet somebody because I like my own space and I just feel that if I was to meet somebody, they have to break down that wall, if you know what I mean. Um, and that's what I'm worried about in the future because mm -hmm. I can't stand living with other people. <laughs> but you're lonely. Yeah. So you've got this conflict going on yeah. where you really want to share your time with someone but also does that all those thoughts consume you quite a lot is that a big thing mm -hmm. for you like i wouldn't say i'm like i'm not depressed or anything like that obviously back then during my breakup i was quite well you know i had to go and see a mental health nurse and stuff like that because it was my first ever relationship first ever boyfriend first love like i've i was in love with him that much that you know like you you are with someone it's different now when i'm like oh, i'm 32 i don't have a boyfriend i feel like i struggle living with someone i just yeah can i ask you you don't need to talk about it if you don't want to already say it bad do you can you say what happened in that relationship what caused it to break down um he just didn't love me anymore and that's what he said so did you live together no but how long had you been together four years you're still i mean you'd be really young what age were you i then? was 25 when he broke up aye, with me. so you were 21 when you so near you, enough 21 yeah aye. so you'd be devastated and you're now in your 30s and still probably dealing with that yeah like i'm over them however that has caused me to become very much guarded and um, I can't, can't think of the word. Just trying to protect yourself yeah. from that hurt again. Yep. Mm. But that's then creating the conflict of 
you really want to be with. Well, yeah. you really want to share time with yeah. somebody else. Yeah. And do you know, I think it's really brave and honest to like admit that because a lot of the time, a lot of the stuff out there is you know, be happy with yourself and you don't need somebody else, you don't need a man, mm. you don't need a woman or whatever. Um, but actually, sometimes, like what you're saying, you know, in your situation, it does affect you. You know, you do want to share. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything to try and actively meet somebody? Are you online? Got some online stories for us, Cal? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know them? Aye, come on. Like I don't, I don't meet, I don't meet any. Like I do meet people online. Like obviously, do you meet people through TikTok? No, not in that way. No. No, people don't approach you in TikTok. But guys, no, it's usually just like. Do you do grinder? Because that's a head. Fuck! If ever I knew one, I think it was actually Lewis for TikTok that explained to me what grinder was. No, that's a lie. He was talking about it, it was Emma, Mother Rendell, explained to me what Grinder was, and I was like, you're joking. I mean, I get it. I get there's a market for that, but, like, how would you... Well, for the people that don't know, Callum, I think you're going to have to explain what Grinder is. Grinder is an app for gay men. Um, there is profile pictures. No, 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 there's more than that. It's an app for gay men. For what, Callum? Bum fun. <laughs> Specifically for uh, and it's, like one off intimacy. Yeah. Is that that's putting it for length? However, there is a lot of people on there who are married with wives as well. Oh my jeez. With girlfriends. Uh, um I do have a story actually if you want to hear. Ah, it. of course I do. I want to hear all the stories. A couple of years ago I was somebody that lived in my block, actually in my flat, he doesn't live there anymore. But he came to my flat once, and <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. And, and you, you <laughs> found uh, him on Grindr. I found him on Grindr. But he lived in your blog. Yep. So, I can't... Sorry, Aunt Yvonne, if you're going to watch this. <laughs> um, <laughs> she was. <laughs> I basically met the guy. He came out of my house, went in my bedroom. We played around a bit, and then his... <laughs> his penis almost touched my butthole and and then told me I had to leave and then that night he messaged me and was like sorry I didn't like you you were too fat oh my god <laughs> oh my god right so like that's not that can't be good for your <laughs> mental health either that can't so how like how do you go over is that alright for you <laughs> No, like... It wasn't okay, it wasn't okay to begin with, um, because you know I'm not skinny, I'm not fat, but I'm in the middle. If you know what I mean, for somebody to say that to me, I was just kind of like, "Well, you just before I f before anything happened, so you're just blaming me." But it was you. Aye, aye, that was maybe aye. That's just, mm -hmm. that's just you know to deflect any. I did a TikTok video about it actually, and I got six hundred thousand views. And it was me holding a donut and squirty cream. <laughs> right, we get the picture, man. <laughs> we get the picture. Oh my god! For somebody that's so nervous and shy getting in what? here, you <laughs> just told the most um, horrific story. Uh, yeah, to the bone story I think I've ever had. Do you still do that? Do you still meet people on Grinder? Is that something that you? Yeah, I do, do and. You? It's quite a common thing. It's not like one-off scenarios. Yeah, but I've is it just gay men? I didn't know. I thought it... Like, I didn't know it was well, just it, gay men that was on it. It is supposed to be gay men, but oh, there right. is a few, obviously. Aye, well, I see. Nah, I know what you're saying. Right, so what about like the guys who are married? I've never met anybody that's married on it, but I have had messages, and as soon as I know that they're wifed, I'm like, fuck. Aye, you're not interested no. in that. No. Do they tell you that? Openly? Sometimes, yeah. Man, that's why. Or sometimes it's got like uh, in their bio, it's like straight married, uh, and then they end up telling you that they've got like a wife or a girlfriend. Or it's crazy. 
have you ever met anybody? If, so since your breakup, have you had any other kind of serious relationships? No. Not at all. Not at all. You won't. So, you, but you and have. And it's it's me, because I just panic when someone likes me, and then I just run off. It's a has, shame. Has there been that scenario? A few. But you but you want to be with somebody. How are you going to go over that? Not going. <laughs> are you working on it? Yes, I am. Trying to. By doing what? What are you trying to do? Um. Talk to people more. I don't know if it's me being picky. Um, or it's just not, I don't know. You don't have anything that's in the pipeline for, to help you with that. You're just trying to just get help by. yourself. Yeah. Are you seeing anybody that now did I ask you that? No. no. Right, but you're still on, are you on any other apps to try and find somebody? I mean, apart from TikTok, but you say nobody. Tinder, you... but mm. it's just messaging backwards and forwards but then there's nothing really i do get like matched and then unmatched so i don't know whether, whether it's like they swipe and then they see you actually and they go oh, actually no then they unmatch you mm -hmm. um but no i'm not really I'm, I'm talking to like people when i match with them but other than that yeah. go and explain what you because i've never been on tinder because obviously i've been married for 17 years right so i've met i'm too old for that i've missed that whole no i'm not too old for it what i mean is i've missed it in that whole era era of swiping and whatever and i get that swiping's a thing but what does that actually mean what do you mean how does it work how does tinder work so it's got for those that don't know which you've is got it? your profile mm -hmm. or Basically, Tinder shows you people's profiles, and if you swipe to the left, it means that you don't like them. If you swipe to the right, it means oh, that you like them. Right. So okay. if someone says, swi oh, I totally swipe left on them, that means they didn't like them. So If somebody them. swipes right or left on you, do does Tinder tell you? Yes, yeah, so it tells you a notification saying you've got a match. So if somebody swipes right, that means that person ha is going to connect with you. Mm -hmm. So... So if they'll swipe right and then if you, they're, let's just say if someone was on my profile and they swiped right and then I saw their pro profile, I swiped right. It you both need to swipe right. No, yeah, so the profile will come, uh, the notification comes up on your phone basically saying you've matched with so-and-so. And, -so. and right. then you can get to chatting. Okay, so the way that it works, like any social media platform, you would scroll mm -hmm. and, you, and you would stop. Profile. You was so, sure, surely somebody swiping left has just been a git. Why mm -hmm. would you know just keep scrolling? Because it tells you once you see their picture, if you swipe, if you scroll up the way, it tells you the bio. So it tells you their age, what they like, if they've got a bio in there, and then where they're from, and how far away they are from you, and then if they, because some people might just like swipe, swipe uh, left because. Maybe they're too far away. Oh, right. Or... So to let the app know. Yeah. That that, so the app knows what to show you. Mm -hmm. So the app So knows... you can set your dis you can set your preferences as well with your age, um, what you're looking for and your pref like your miles for who's in I there. radius. Yeah, I radius. Yeah. Right, so sh still though, surely swiping left is just to be horrible to somebody then. Because they would come up within your radius. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you swipe left? Why would you just not keep scrolling? Maybe they're, maybe they're just not into that person, or... So you do get notifications saying X number of people swipe left on you? Like, no, you don't, don't get see... you don't get notifications, but, like, you'll just, you'll just... You can look at your stats, and it'll tell you that. All right, so, they, so Tinder doesn't actually say to you, you've had 15 swipe left. No. <laughs> so, right. But swipe rights, you would get a notification. Yeah, you would get a notification that's... to say that somebody liked you, or someone's swiped and you get a match and stuff like that as well so when you see that and you go on how likely are you to swipe right as well in your experience <laughs> <laughs> i'm very picky so if it's not someone that i kind of go for then i will you will swi swipe left left if it's somebody that like because i'm uh, i've got like i find straighter gay men kind of more attractive see that's totally confuses me that's just like <laughs> so like people that are gay but are a wee bit more masculine all right so, so if so i'm i'm into them so if i see someone that i'm like that's not kind of my type then because i'm the more feminine one do you know what i mean 
Oh, I don't think you are, but, I, but I, fine. I, I do feel like um, I am. So I would just, anyone that's more kind of feminine, maybe, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll just kind of... So you like the, like, so I would think he, holy Kevin's kind of <laughs> gay guy. Uh -huh. Would that, I mean, do you know fancy Luke Evans? Who is do you know that? who I mean? He's the Welsh... Oh my God, you need to look him up on Instagram after this. Then he's the Welsh actor, singer, performer. He is gorgeous. Like, I fancy Luke Evans. <laughs> so that's why. But I mean, like, so take George Michael then, right? You know George Michael? Mm -hmm. um, I know he's... He would obviously, if he was still alive, he'd be a good bit older than you. But also, like, that type... He'll look more oh, fancy George Michael or I did, obviously, right? Would would that be your thing? Yeah, I think so. Like that kind of yeah. so I do have a major, major crush on Simon Pegg. Oh see, I don't know who that is. He was in Shaun of the Dead. No, I don't no, no. no, no, no. I'm totally ignorant to that. I don't Sorry. know why, but I just find him sexy as anything when I see him on films. So you would then if you got a swipe right you would have a look. What would you be looking for? Just that look. Where they're... At, you, would you look at their bio if they didn't look? Do you look at the whole picture? Yeah, yeah. Um... So what are you looking for? What's the ideal? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, it just like if they've got like an interesting bio, um, and if they've got like. If they are nice, kind of looking and stuff like if that. If you're attracted to yeah. them physically. Yeah, but it's not just all about looks, but, like, if they've got a bio that's quite interesting, then I will swipe right, mm -hmm. and then, obviously, I'll get to know them a wee bit, but um, it's been ages since I've met somebody from actual Tinder, to be honest. I was just going to ask that. Um, what would be an interesting bio? Uh, where they're from, what they do for a living, uh, their hobbies. Would they give a description of themselves? Yeah, usually they do, I. Have you been on a Tinder date? Not for a long time. But if you've been on one, yeah. and what's that like? Is that no dead nail fracking? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine so. Especially when you just, all you're doing is just talking to someone through text. Mm -hmm. And not actually any FaceTime, anything like that. Have you ever been stood up? I've heard some horrific Tinder stories, not not just from... I've like, been stood up from... But grinder meets but i've not been still on tinder meets <laughs> well grinders just flaming i don't know another world anyway that doesn't surprise me um what would be your perfect date what's your perfect date and your perfect meal oh i love food so it would be anything honestly i like going for walks and i like going for drives as well um that's an, uh, that is a perfect day, actually, and then going for something to eat. Yeah, but like, I like any kind of food, so any, any restaurant, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, right, okay, what would be your death row meal then? Oh, don't say that See, to me. No, no, you have to choose one. Oh. Can I be start our main dessert? <laughs> Please, tell us the um, whole shoot. It would be... Match. Jalapeno pop, jal jal jalapeno poppers. No, it's jalapeno. I know. <laughs> um, jalapeno poppers, what's that? Oh, they've got like, it's a jalapeno. Uh huh. Cream cheese. Uh huh. And then and it's bread crumb. Uh, mm, I've not had that. Oh, it's really good. Is it quite hot? Yeah. See, uh, uh, that wouldn't yeah. work for me. Um, mm -hmm. I like, I love pizza, lasagna, anything like that. Italian, is yeah. that your favourite food? I like pasta. Um, no, you need to choose one. Oh, right, so can't. jalapeno poppers for a starter. Do you know what? Mac and cheese. <laughs> that would, oh, I would love to pack that. Mac and cheese. I love mac and cheese. Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. And I would make my own cupcakes for dessert. Is that your favourite sweet? Yeah. Do I'd... you cook savoury as well as bacon? Are you get into cooking? Sometimes. Like, um, I do cook quite a bit, but because obviously work and stuff, I always just... Go for the quick, easy Aye. option. But like if I'm off, I will cook from scratch. Mm -hmm. But I'm more a dessert maker, but I don't m uh, taste them. If you, you know don't I mean. eat the sweet. I don't eat them because oh, the amount of sugar good. that's in them. I know. But, but I let, like I baked the other day and I just gave them all my neighbours. 
Right. See, I was like, I've made Nutella cupcakes. Do you want some? Yes. Yeah, so I just like. Your neighbours must love you then. Yeah. Well, I've just started talking to them this year. How <laughs> long have you lived there? Four years. Are you quite an introvert. Yeah. See, you would think. I, I keep think... my I keep myself to myself because I didn't really know anybody for the four years, but now I've started talking to like everybody in my in my, in my block. So. Apart from well, that guy from Grindr, because we he doesn't live there. Anymore. But you said, I was just going to say, you said he doesn't live there anymore. Thank God. Um, your cupcakes. I was thinking you would need to sweeten up your neighbours with your cupcakes because of your TikToks and the noise that you probably. Well, make, I'm on the ground. I'm Bell. on the ground floor. <laughs> Screaming when you came up. I know. Right. I'm on the ground floor, so l- right. luckily that's that's ah, good. right. So that helps. Yep. But your neighbours are your friends because you make them cupcakes mm-hmm. anyway. Right, go back to the favourites thing because. Because I love this chat anyway, this type of stuff. So that was your starters, mains and dessert. So it was the jalapeno poppers, macaroni and your own cupcakes. That would be your perfect, well, that would be your death row meal. Mm -hmm. And going a walk or a drive and then having that meal would be your perfect day. Mm -hmm. There's got to be somebody out there for you, Callum, with with ideas like that. That's just lovely. Um, what's your favourite crisps? Oh, tackies. Oh, they flaming yeah. hot things. Yeah, I love tackies. That or, um, I do like flame grilled steak McCoys. Aye, they're good. They keep coming back at me though. If I have them, aye. That's nobody needed to know that. Um, sweeties. What's your favourite sweeties? A boost bar. I love a boost. Oh, a biscuit boost. Yeah, the you know the the, the blue. The, yeah. Do you remember coconut boosts? No. Years and years ago, there used to be. See, maybe you're too young for that. That was my favourite. I mean, I don't eat sweeties now anyway. But when I did, and I was totally obsessed with chocolate and sweeties, the red it was a red one. So it wasn't the. So it's almost like a a boost, a blue boost, but without the biscuit, it was just coconut. I didn't know through that. Through the mixture. Aye. It's amazing they done away with them. And they oh. were the best. They were the best. I do like a boost there. and I do like a star bar. Do you drink tea or coffee? I don't drink any hot drinks. Drinks at all? So you don't do the dip in my biscuit? No. Or, oh. so that's a big thing for oh. the people like uh, uh, the Misfit Moz page. Because when <laughs> I said, like, I stopped eating uh, <coughs> chocolate in my year, I have chocolate sweeties, biscuits and all of that. I'm no, comp- I'm no sugar free. I just cut mm-hmm. back massively. Like, I wouldn't drink a monster, man. No way. I've never had a monster my whole entire life. What? No, I don't even know what it... What is it? Lemonade style yeah. that is? No, I, would, I wouldn't even know that. 165 I can, but... Oh my god, is it? <coughs> or 85, not 165. 165. Holy smoke. Aye, so when I'd been saying... Because it's like just a year past that I'd stopped eating the sweeties and that. And every time I say it, I get messages saying, what do you dip into a cup of tea? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, that does make me laugh because my gran... Oh, I couldn't have a cup of tea without dipping Sahar in it. Uh-huh. You know, like so the fact that you don't even have, you know. Have... You had Amanda Melnon, mm-hmm. and I was obsessed with her videos when she was use. I don't know if you saw them, but she was using every sort of biscuit to just like soak up her tea. Oh. And I was just, I was obsessed with them, but I just uh. don't drink tea or coffee. I just, I don't know why. I'm not a coffee fan. It reminds me of like teachers' breaths. Aye. That's a that's a yeah, point. Um, but I'm not a big tea drinker anyway. Like I'll have a hot chocolate now and again, but I'm more of a monster caffeine person. I keep you going because mm-hmm. you're working so many, so many hours, long yeah. hours. Right, so I'm going to take it right back to your childhood. Oh, <laughs> what was that like then? Uh, I mean, there's maybe stuff that you can't talk about because you've said about like your relationship. Mm-hmm. Your stepdad. Yeah. Um, I was pretty much a performer when I was younger. So that's why you kind of grew up yeah. doing that as well. So I used to like, I was obsessed with steps when I was younger. Steps, Spice Girls, I still am. <laughs> Any con, like, see when steps go back together and steps were like doing their concerts again, I was there. Um, I've never managed to see the Spice Girls ever, so as soon as they re- reunite, I'm there. But, um, 
But when I was younger, me and my sister Leanne, this was before Charlotte was born, we used to like perform. It was like a little pub outside our house where we used to live. And they had like a patio bit. I mean, Leanne used to constantly just sing and dance on there. So I was always singing and dancing all the time. So between then and doing TikTok, was there anything in between? Did you still perform up until you came out and not came out? I did a couple, of, a couple of years at um, the Adam Smith Theatre where I was doing like, trying to see if I could maybe like doing acting, but I was rubbish at it. But mm -hmm. probably, I'd probably be better now because I've got more experience on camera. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, I was not very good when I was younger. Have you had any professional training? No. For that? No, so no. everything you do in TikTok, self-taught? Mm -hmm. Same with baking, self-taught. Aye. Taught myself how to bake. Um, yeah, pretty much just try and learn it by myself. Mm -hmm. Right, the childhood, go back to that. Because there must be a coming out story within that as well. And we'll have a coming out mm. story, but I do. Um, so, I knew this was going to come up. So I had well, a little... We've only got 15 minutes left. I had a I'm little... just remembering. <laughs> I had a little story prepared anyway, so... Oh, good. Um, growing up, like, I wasn't really sure who I was when I was, at, like, when I was younger. Um, I hadn't been In with... terms of sexuality? Yeah. Uh, I knew I liked men. Didn't know if I liked women. But, you know, high school, for me, was a bit of a nightmare because people would just automatically assume, oh... He's gay. Do you know what I mean? And I hadn't... Why? I hadn't, because I, I don't, don't think you give that off. I do, but, I do. Well, I didn't, I'll be honest, I, I didn't think, that didn't go through my mind. If you I ask my Auntie Yvonne, ask my <laughs> Auntie Yvonne. <laughs> right, okay. Um, so, high school was just like, gay, gay. Do you know what I mean? And that for me was quite hard to, because I didn't know if I was getting made fun of or... So it was a lot, it was really hard for me to just say, who do I like, what do I like? I don't know what I like. Let me find out myself. Instead of just assuming and pointing at me that I'm gay. Um, so you weren't openly gay out. at that time no, because you didn't, didn't know yourself? I didn't know I was properly gay and I didn't come out to my mum until I was 19. Because of the whole high school era, I was like, I'm a, am I? Am I not? Were you bullied because of it? I wouldn't say bullied. I was made fun of quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, Did that affect you? Yeah, because if I, if it didn't affect me, I probably would have came out a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, I was 19 when I told my mum that I was gay. What made you finally realise, accept, whatever the right terminology is? When I was going to gay clubs and finding out that I was having more fun there and making out with men, <laughs> and then finally telling my mum <laughs> that was that gave me the courage <laughs> to finally. But tell did, her. so that was the courage. But did you know in your own mind well before that? Yeah. Like, did you realise? Yeah, I just didn't want to say anything. I don't know why. I think because of the whole high school experience, I was just like, "What are people going to think?" So I'd kept it in for quite a long time. Did you tell any confide when anybody else? My sister knew. My sister knew. Leanne, mm -hmm. um, and she didn't care to be fair. Um, my mum had a, she didn't take it as well as I thought she would have, but she, <laughs> she was sick and tired of me coming home the morning after. <laughs> so oh, right. so she eventually, machine, she regularly. eventually, do you know what? She accepted it, you know, after, it wasn't that long until after I told her, she just didn't want me to be a dirty wee stop out anymore oh, right. so she's like i just want you to be happy and i was like i will be somehow mm -hmm. and she supported you anyway all supported the way. me all the way every step and she's my best pal mm -hmm. and so there is need really a bit other than that a big coming out story you just eventually told your i mom eventually told my mum my stepdad my dad knew when i well i never actually told him my sister told him um her and her boyfriend then uh, went down to London to see him and just was like Calm's gay and he was just like I knew because of the amount of times I was singing and dancing to steps or like me and my sister and my cousin used to reenact the Power Rangers I was always the pink one so mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
But pink's no, that doesn't even mean anything now. Like, no. everybody wears pink Pink's now. my favourite colour. Do you know what's but... funny? Oh, me too. Pink's my favourite colour. I always think it's funny you should say that. This is unrelated, but related. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, Lola's into hairspray and all of that now, and slitting back her hair with thousands of hairspray, and I use hairspray. And when I was using it this morning, it came into my mind. So I've bought Harmony, which has been on the market for years, right? And Harmony hairspray reminds me of my friend in high school and first year, who was my best pal. Her mum used Harmony hairspray and she had beautiful hair. And, you know, I used to look at her and, because my mum never used any hair products or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I do that thing of been mesmerised by my pal's mum who always did her hair she had a perm and it was like you know sticking up like it was in the do you know the way around with the hairspray and it was the harmony hairspray and the smell has remained in my brain they've changed the smell slightly but the undertones are still there if what it used to be but anyway the whole reason I'm saying that is harmony hairspray used to be a bottle with a woman's head on it okay. actually a woman mm -hmm. right and it was a white can with a woman on it and now it's just a gold can with black writing right and I was thinking to myself isn't that mental how the world has evolved because it used to be assumed or it was just a given thing that hairspray was marketed and targeted on women yeah like only women used hairspray mm -hmm. but now <laughs> thankfully we've evolved and these companies have, you know, evolved with the times as well. And everybody uses hairspray. hairspray. So you now don't get it with the picture of the woman mm -hmm. on the front. In fact, I'm sure Elnick, the expensive hairspray, used to be a woman as well. And they've just, they've changed all of that. They've made the marketing more inclusive, mm -hmm. I suppose, is the right thing. So like that, it just relates to the pink, I think. It's yeah. just not a thing now yeah. that it's a boy or a girl. Even although gender reveals... You know, it's still they use the boy and the blue, the blue and yeah. the pink and whatever for that. Um, it was something else I was going to say about that. I this is maybe too personal, but I thought I would ask you anyway. See that whole time you were trying to, I don't know what the right word is. Realize yourself whether you were gay or not. Did you ever go out with girls or have a relationship with a girl during that? I experimented. <laughs> but I didn't know. So what do you mean you experimented? You did go with a girl. Aye, it's yeah. alright. I think it's alright to say. Are you worried now in case she watches? And no, I'm not. Mm, I'm not worried. I just what I was going to say was a bit graphic, so I was just going to. Oh right, okay, right, okay, <laughs> right. So yeah, so right, so I can read between the lines with that that you have been with a girl then right and that so did you know from that 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 wasn't for you or were you still like i hadn't had sex with a girl but i had i i i get it experimented mm -hmm. other ways um mm -hmm. and yeah i just didn't like it yeah it was new so that's how no. was that part was that part of you finding out like knowing was that because mm -hmm. everybody's different everybody's story is different um that was part of your way of ascertaining yeah definitely because i like penis too much and did you do it only once did you get involved mm. only and that just was once enough? and i was like nope not for me uh you preferred cock crunching <laughs> see now we're coming to the end he's getting all gallows and relaxed <laughs> and that just when we're ready because we're talking about like <laughs> aye, that aye. me talking about my personal is quite nervous for me because i never do it Aye, so you're you're masking me. So the, I'm, I mask my humour. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. You mask your what insecurities? Not insecurities, like my possibly maybe, or I just mask my like vulnerability side. Aye, with humour. It's making you feel vulnerable. Yeah. But would you not say you're very comfortable with who you are now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that you need to work on? Uh, Callum Smart, what's the biggest thing? What would the answer be to my that? My social... You? My socialness of Skills. everybody. Aye. Mm -hmm. Like... My, like, the rest of my family. Because uh, it's just... I kind of just... 
you know, it's just me, my two sisters. I do have, obviously, a stepdad, but we do talk sometimes, but he's more talking to Leanne. Like, Charlotte and Leanne more talk to him more than I talk to him. Um, and it's the same with, you know, my Auntie Vaughn's side. I've, you know, they've done nothing wrong to me, um, and I love them all to bits. But, yeah, I'm just very much antisocial, and I just like my family that I've got, even though I like them as well. I don't know how I'm explaining it because it sounds bad, but I'm just... No, you're not being bad. I think, I mean, it's fine to say what you feel are your challenges. Yeah. And your personal challenges, socialising yeah. out with your immediate family. Yeah, because I'm, I'm really bad at it. Like, I'd, I even said that to, like, my cousins when we were at my my mum's 60th. I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm so antisocial. You know, I'm working. The days off that I've got, I'm with either friends or social media or just chilling as like and I don't have it's not that I don't have the time I just I don't know see when you're having to go to social events you really having to make a serious effort yep. within yourself yeah if it's a family event yeah family specifically are you much more comfortable in a situation with strangers how ironic is that? Because most know. people would say the opposite. Yeah. That they're comfortable with their family, but, but more I think, I, I, I don't, I think, because I don't talk to them very much. And that's what makes me nervous when I'm like, are they going to have a go at me if I don't talk to them? Or if I've not spoke to them in ages? Mm. Or sort of that. You've just got me expectations just... of their expectations. Yeah. Right. I get that. I get it. Um, I was going to ask you something else because you went to, I'm conscious of time, we've only got a few minutes. You went to, um, oh, Fraser's Hypno yeah. thing, yeah. right? And you and you partook in that? Yeah, I did. So, Fraser, the, Fraser Penman, the world's most unique hypnotist who I had in my car as well. How did you cope with that? Because that's quite an I loved it. thing to do. I loved it because meeting everybody that I kind of follow, I loved it because obviously I talked to everybody from the app anyway, like mm -hmm. most of them that were there. So I kind of knew, I felt like I knew them anyway. Mm -hmm. if you know and you I mean. socialise, as you've already said, you socialise with strangers a lot easier mm -hmm. than you socialise with. Yeah, although funnily enough, family. after I was ready to go home, everyone was like, oh, we'll go for, you want, want to go for food? And I'm like, no. And then I was actually following like Rachel Spicer, because Jared, Littlest Chicken was uh, in the car as well. Mm -hmm. And I was just like driving, ready to go into the motorway, and I went, "Fuck it!" <laughs> and, you and then I and them. I went, and I had like the best time, and I'm glad I did think that before turning left uh, onto the motorway in Glasgow. I, I imagine that would be amazing. I didn't know you all went for something to eat after it. Where did you go? And um, we just went to Spoons. It was only a few of us. It wasn't like everybody. Uh, right. But um, we just went to Spoons. They, I was driving, so like everybody was kind of like drinking as well. And, we socialised a wee bit after it, and then I had the best sleep after being hypnotised. Uh, so everybody says that. So does I had that. the best it's sleep, mm -hmm. and I don't remember because obviously there's the clips of me being a, I think it was a bumblebee, Aye. and I just didn't remember anything until I'd watched it back again and going. You didn't remember it? No, See, I was fully aware. I when was he was doing it to me, bro. Nah, I say fully aware. I like, don't. I don't remember it happening very much. Like, I woke up and, yeah, everybody was laughing at me and I was watching the clips back going, I don't remember doing that. And I was so out of it. But it was just like, I was mm -hmm. just remember just drifting constantly. There, there was times where I was waking up because people were laughing and it wasn't, like, affecting them. But, no, it affected me and I had, like, the best sleep after. Oh, that's... Insane. I'm glad that turned out really well for you. He's great. He's great He's at good, what he yeah. does. Aye. Um, so, right, final question. I just want to ask you what your ideal future would be for Callum. I just want to make the world laugh. Aww. I do. I just love making people laugh and making people happy. And if I'm doing that, then that's good. And it comes back to you would yep. like to do your social media yep. full time. Definitely. Well, Callum, you did smash and for Thank somebody you. that was extremely nervous. Nervous. And I think we got, for the people especially that know you from TikTok, I think they'll enjoy seeing this wee insight to Callum's world. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.